All right, so we're going to do things a little bit different today. I'm going to I'm going to hip you guys to some knowledge that some of you don't have because some of you guys need some serious help. Oh, yeah. You got to get swifty. You got to get swifty. Yeah. It's time to get swifty. This video is brought to you by Cyber Gameway. With an emphasis on exposing streamers of all types, as well as exploring business relationships with partnered websites and service providers, Cyber Gameway is the place you want to be for streaming gamers who want that sub bump. To apply for membership or sponsorship, head over to CyberGameway.com. As I said, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Uh, having built computers for so long and having been exposed to them since childhood, it, you know, it, it, it amazes me to this day that there's still sort of a stigma that comes along with it because people young and old still sort of look at building computers or at least, you know, being, you know, exposed to computers sort of like um, a foreign film without subtitles. It's daunting, it's scary, and people just don't want to get involved with it at all. Well, I'm here to tell you that today it's never been easier and it's never been a better time to get involved. You know, it, it, you can look at the, you know, what kind of parts you're going to want and you can look at all the abbreviations and terminology and it might seem scary, but really once you get into it, it's really not that difficult. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through what you need to know and some other stuff that you might want to know and it'll all be okay. So with that in mind, here we go. <laughs> So there's really only eight pieces that you need to build a computer. That's it, eight. Uh, very, very simple. So you've got your case, you have a motherboard, you've got a CPU processor, you have memory, you have storage, you have graphics if you're building a gaming computer, you have cooling, and then you have cables. Very simple. So we're gonna go through these one by one. Number one, your case. I call it a chassis because I'm a huge nerd, elitist f Your chassis is just what it needs to be. You can pick and choose between what you want um, based on what you want it to do. I've got a computer over there. It, I call it Blandolf the White because it's a dinky little Corsair Carbide Mini ITX. It doesn't do anything other than play movies, play you know Netflix, things like that, um, and download movies legally. Uh, so it didn't need to be much. The, the Corsair Carbide Air is only about 14 inches tall and about 16 inches deep. Uh, so it didn't need to do much, hence I have a very small motherboard in it. When you're picking your case, you have to be very case dependent because you need to pick a case that's going to suit what you're going to be doing with it. There's different kinds of motherboards and there's different kinds of cases for that kind of thing. You have your mini ITX case, but then you also have micro ATX and you have full ATX. ATX cases can get very, very big uh, because once you get to that particular size, you're talking a full size motherboard and you're talking about, if you get cases like from Case Labs, Lee and Lee or anything like that, your cases can and will be really, really big because those cases are set up for performance. And this, not, this is talking about, you know, super, you know, $10,000, $20,000 computers for like eSports gaming. These are serious performance uh, computers and so these cases are set up for that kind of thing. Not, the, not, not to mention that there's a lot of people out there building their own custom stuff, you know, using cooling that is not stock. So you're going to have people building water cooling units with custom piping and things like that. And for that, you need a lot of space. And the more you are going to be doing with a computer, the more intensive the experience, the more heat you're going to generate. And that's another thing you need to consider. Heat is your enemy. So we'll, we'll get into that. But for now, just understand that your case is directly reflective of what you're going to be doing with your computer. So you got to pick and choose based on what you want your computer to do. It might not seem like a big thing, but it is. <laughs> your CPU, also called the central processing unit. Put simply, this is the brain of your computer. It doles out all the tasks uh, from the core functions the computer needs to do, and it also communicates with all the different peripherals you've got on it, like plugged into uh, your computer, 
it controls the fans, it controls the memory, it controls all the storage, it, like, everything the computer needs to do at its core function, the CPU does. It's the brain. Next up is your motherboard. If we're using the body analogy, the motherboard is your computer's nervous system. It's what sends all the message from the CPU to all the different parts of the computer relaying uh, the commands for the tasks that it has to perform. It also directly interconnects with all the stuff that's plugged into it. That's why you have uh, your CPU power cable plugged into it. You've got your motherboard power cable plugged into it. Not to mention you've got your hard drive cables plugged into it. And if you've got a graphics card, Ethernet, blah, 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 all that stuff is directly interconnected to the motherboard. Like, like your limbs, your, your, your nervous system controls all that. Same thing, same basic principle. And with computer cases, motherboards can and do come in very different sizes. You've got your stupid, dinky, Dell f***ing desktop computer that runs banking accounting and things like that and not a whole lot else you know, Dell, but you've also got Mini ITX motherboards, which are just about square. Mini ITX motherboards are motherboards. You, you can build gaming computers out of them. In fact, I've, I've built one. Many other people just love the challenge of building a performance computer using such a small motherboard. And today it's getting easier and easier. Uh, you've got the Corsair One, which uses a Mini ITX board and it's a monster if you hook it up right. Not to mention, uh, NZXT just came out with their H1, and that's not anything to shake a stick at, so I won't. Next, you've got Micro ATX, which is just the size above that. It's, you know, what can loosely be a rectangle. If your mini ITX is a, is a square, the Micro ATX adds a little bit more than that, like two inches, and plus maybe an inch, you know, in width. And with a micro ATX board, the ability to perform isn't so much the importance of it as what you can connect to it. Because with a mini with a mini ITX board, you're going to have one peripheral hookup and maybe two memory slots. That's it. ASUS does make one called the Mini DTX, which is an AMD board. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about AMD later. But the Mini DTX board is just a smidge bigger than a Mini ITX and a little bit wider so you can do a little bit more with it. It's really expensive, but I highly recommend it if you have the means. Next up, we've got the, the full ATX motherboard. Now, the ATX motherboards are the standard. If you're going to be building a performance gaming computer, this is really what you want to go with if you want a good performing system. So full ATX motherboards come with more slots for memory come with more ports for storage and also you'll have a whole lot more uh, what are called PCI slots to plug in peripherals like a graphics card, uh, Ethernet, Ethernet adapter. If you want to add more USB ports you can do all that with much more uh, PCI slots. The long and short of it is generally the bigger the motherboard you're getting the more you're going to be able to do with it. There's motherboards out there that can support two CPUs and those are some seriously performed. They're not gaming motherboards. You don't want to be gaming with them because, it, well, it's just, it's really just overkill. I've seen them before and that's great, but you're spending a whole lot of money on something you can just do with a better CPU. But that said, they are some serious, serious performance motherboards out there. And you will, you will see a whole lot of these if you get seriously into them. EVGA, one of the biggest one of the biggest tech companies in the world, makes a seriously kick-ass motherboard called the Dark. And it's a big one and it's a serious performer. Pick what you like. Like I said, you're it, you have to base your parts on what you're going to be doing with it. So pick pick what you like. Moving on, we've got memory. With this is called RAM, otherwise known as random access memory. If we're using the body analogy again, this is your computer's short-term memory. It uses what's called a cache, and this is based on the, the, the capacity of your memory. Generally, these come in, in two DIMM packs. DIMMs are, you know, just the RAM sticks. They come in two stick packs that you stick in your motherboard, and again, like, the, the more capacity you have for this, the more your computer can call up 
in a short amount of time and the more it can it, it's basically like okay well i was just doing this over here i'll just put this in the center again and so with a higher capacity of ram the more you can do just quickly it, it it allows your computer to access more files quickly because it's putting more files and programs in the cache it, we're talking capacity 8 gigabytes 16 gigabytes there's computers out there with 128 gigabytes that's some serious blasting power but another thing that affects your computer's performance is the RAM speed, or the refresh rate. Refresh rate's very important, but it's not so important that you have to get the best stuff in the world. So the TLDR in this is, the more RAM you have, the more you can do in a short amount of time. The faster RAM you have, the faster it's going to do it. Da -da. Storage. There's a lot, so let's go through them. There's HDD, SSD, NVMe, M.2, NAND flash, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot. So let's start with this one. HDD is hard disk drive. This has been the standard for decades. And I'm talking since I was a kid. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's that. And what it is, is it's a high capacity drive with moving parts. And it has disks in it. It has, you know, many disks in it. And it's all asked to access by mag magnetic parts. I don't know, remember what they're called. I call them clickers. But basically, they're these things, it's like on a record player, you've got your little needle that goes, you know, that plays the song. That's basically what a hard drive is doing whenever you're using it. Uh, it's ask, accessing different parts of the different files that you're using. Now, hard drives have been around for decades because they are solid. And that's why if you're building a gaming computer, you definitely want to have one of these. And it can be anywhere from one terabyte if you're just playing, you know, one or two games, or if you have something like my computer, if you're doing video editing, photography, music recording, that kind of thing, you're gonna want a bigger hard drive. I have 10 terabytes. <laughs> so yeah, hard drives, definitely a must if you're going to be building a gaming computer because they live longer. Really, the performance isn't that much different than anything else and you're definitely going to have a bigger capacity. So this is an SSD. It's really small and you can basically velcro this to your computer case. Uh, and so SSD means solid state drive, which means it doesn't have any moving parts. It, this is great because your read write speeds are going to be a lot faster. Um, that doesn't mean that you that you can that you can do a whole lot more with them than a hard drive. It just means you're gonna be able to, you know, read read and write your files a lot faster. This is an NVMe drive. Again, it has no moving parts. It's based on an SSD, you know, protocol. And this is fine. This is not a very good one, but you, you see what I'm talking about. This plugs directly into your computer's motherboard in so much as this is plugged into what's called a SATA port. It uses an actual cable. This goes directly into either your PCI slot or like this into your motherboard, into an NVMe M.2 port. Both of these things are quite fast. Both of them have no moving parts, and that's great. If we're talking about the difference between NVMe, SSD, and hard drives, the capacity is the biggest issue you'll have. Hard drives are always going to be bigger because they are. They're a bigger drive and therefore can have a much bigger capacity because not only can they access bigger files, they can also handle the heat, which between SSDs and M.2s is going to be a huge issue. Because heat is an issue, you will eventually burn out these drives. The read-write speeds are much faster, but again, you're accessing files on a much smaller hard drive, which is going to cause heat. Now, by the time these things burn out, you'll probably have replaced it. So work back to capacity. Capacity being a little bit, it's getting better, but with like electric cars, the dream hasn't yet caught up to the reality. PSU, otherwise known as a power supply unit. Powers your computer. Why, why doesn't it just plug in straight to the wall? Why can't you just plug your computer directly into the wall? Well, I'll tell you. A power supply is integral to your system because with wall plugs using 110 volts and 220 volts if you're in different parts of the world, 
your computer does not run on that. Your computer runs on 12. So a power supply doesn't just give your computer power, it's transforming it into much less power and pushing it up with higher wattage. If you're building a serious gaming computer, you can have 2000 watt power supply. It still runs on 12 volts. You can have a 400 watt power supply that still runs on 12 volts. This is the, this is the standard because the important thing is that it's dumbing down the volts. And this is because the different parts of your computer run on much less than that. The CPU, for instance, runs on a little bit more than one volt. So you've got to have uh, a system in place that can dole out that amount of power to the particular parts of the computer. And this is why you have cables. Cables, quite simply, take different amounts of power to different parts of the computer. You've got the CPU, which runs on a little bit more than one volt. You've got the motherboard, which runs on a little bit more than that. And you've got different parts of your computer, like hard drives, RAM, that all take up just a little bit of power. So it, it, you're not using the full 12 volts most of the time unless you're running your computer under load. It's the watts. The watts are important because you have a computer that is using up that amount of energy and if you're building a serious gaming computer, you're gonna need more watts in your computer. If you're building a gaming computer, you're not gonna need more than 1600 watts tops because most graphics cards, which is where the bulk of the power is coming from, don't use a whole lot of power these days. And that's a good thing. GPU, otherwise known as graphics processing unit. We're back to the body analogy. The graphics card is your eyes. The graphics controls the visual aspect of your gaming experience. The better the graphics card, the better your gaming experience is going to be. Graphics cards were not a real big thing for a long time, and it wasn't even that long ago that they became, you know, a bit more of an integral part of a gaming computer. Before, you know, you had, you know, games that just weren't doing a whole lot, so you didn't need some serious blasting power for graphics. Now, you really do. If you're going to be playing Red Dead Redemption, you're going to be spending $1,200 if you want to play it on a good resolution. Like everything else in a gaming computer, you've got your pick and choose. It's very case dependent. If you're playing Fortnite, don't spend $1,200 on a graphics card. Don't do it. If you're, if you're trying to be cool, get good at it. That's all you need to do. Fortnite, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Counter-Strike Go, these are all games that were created on a platform to run on a five-year-old, ten-year-old laptop. Don't do it. You don't need it. You look stupid. Okay? Where was I? In my computer right now, I have a, I have a five-year-old uh, Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 580. It's an eight gigabyte graphics card using GDDR5 virtual RAM. That means it's RAM that you're not sticking into it. It's there, it's just on there. It's got eight, gig eight gigabytes of RAM and it runs my games just fine. Why? Because I'm not playing super graphics games these days. I play Mass Effect, which came out, the last one came out in 2000. The, the, you, let's go, let's just back up the trilogy not andromeda i'm not gonna let's just keep it at the trilogy came out in 2012. my rx 580 can handle that just fine in fact i have updated the graphics with nexus mods mods all day long and it runs just fine if you're playing games like that you do not need a 1200 dollars graphics card it's as simple as that you can get by with a gtx 1080 you can get by with a gtx 1050 ti It'll be just fine. If you are, however, going to be playing serious performing games, you do want to maybe invest in an RTX 2080 Ti or a Vega 7, whatever. But if you're not going to be doing that, you don't need it. You can get a better CPU, you can get a better motherboard, you can shore up the difference in performance with better supplies. Don't spend the money if you don't need it. You just don't, and you look The next thing is cooling. With heat being one of the biggest issues in a computer ever, it's been like that since the dawn of time. From 
the 1960s era Cray computers, the supercomputers that were running, you know, our, you know, federal defense to, you know, your dinky little, my, my Blandolf computer, which is a mini ITX computer. He is your enemy. You want to cool that mother You've got fans, you've got water cooling, you've got passive heat sinks. You don't want to use that. You've got many different ways in which to cool your computer because this is something you need to think about. If you're overclocking all this stuff or you're using some serious performance stuff and you're playing on super high-end graphics that's going to put your computer under load, you are going to need to cool that computer as much as possible. So you, let's start with fans. There are many different types. You've got the 10-year-old fans, which a lot of people are still running, that work just fine. They just run at one speed. Uh, then you've got PWM fans, which is pulse modulation fans. They turn on, they turn off, they turn on, they turn off. What this does is it runs your fan at different speeds, which allows for less negative pressure. And if you know what negative pressure is, I don't have to go into it. It's long, it's whatever. Negative pressure is bad because it allow it creates what's called eddies, which amounts in no uncertain terms to turbulence. Turbulence means your air is not going anywhere. That's bad. PWM fans today are the standard, and that's if you're going with an air cooling system, that's what you want. They're not cheap, but they're not that expensive either. So it, whatever system you're going to be running, if you're gonna be running just a regular air cooling system, you do wanna get some PWM fans in there. You can get them with lights, or you can get them with non-lights. Personally, I think the RGB fad is slowly dying away, and I couldn't be happier, even though I build all my stuff with it. If you're going to be playing games like Red Dead Redemption 2, you're going to want to go a little bit more hardcore with your cooling. Even though there are companies out there like Noctua or Be Quiet that develop air coolers that work like gangbusters. But you don't want to do that, do you? You want to be cool, so you want to go with water cooling. Nothing wrong with that. Not necessarily, but there's nothing wrong with that. So you've got two different kinds. You can go with a custom kit, or you can go with an AIO, which means all in one. What this is, it's a tiny little pump that you mount to your CPU, and it's got the hoses that lead to a radiator. The radiator cools the distilled water that's in the hoses that's running on a constant cycle. And if you didn't use any fans, it would be a passive cooling system. But you're gonna wanna put fans on the radiator because it's gonna cool it that much more, like in an engine. That's it. It's a constant closed circuit of cycling water that's being cooled by the radiator. And it, you can either have a fan on that or you don't. It, it's up to you. You need fans, but you just, you need fans. If you're not gonna put an AIO in your computer, you're gonna wanna go with a custom water cooling loop. This is expensive. It does, however, look really cool. And you'll also have a bigger choice with uh, water reservoirs. A bigger reservoir means that there's more water cycling through that loop, which means it's not going to get as hot, which is good because with a custom loop, you're probably going to want you're probably going to want that loop to include your graphics card. So you're going to run from the pump or the, the reservoir, the pump, to your graphics card, to your CPU, back to the radiator, and so with a bigger reservoir you'll have much less heat to, to uh, cool off. You can get glass tubing, you can get plastic tubing, or you can get uh, PETG, which is a little bit more difficult to work with because it cracks. Um, and if you're bending it, it can bubble. Each each type of tubing has its, has its downfalls. If you're using glass, you also run the risk of breaking it and you can't come back from that. Because if you break glass, as we all know, it breaks a lot. Long story short, you're gonna have to do it. You're gonna have to be pretty smart about it too because water cooling, you don't need it for everything that you're doing because you know bank computers don't use it. But if you're gonna be doing serious performance, if you're gonna be doing a lot of video editing or video gaming, things like that, you might wanna consider doing an AIO or a custom loop. You're gonna be spending more on the custom loop, but in the end, it's gonna look cooler and it's gonna be cooler. Take that information with what you will.